John Marjo from Dulles. This is the Rorschach, Georgia update from the 9th of November, 2023. Quick summary of what's going down in Georgia. According to the Georgia State Security Service, on Monday the 6th, Russian occupying forces killed a Georgian citizen in Kirbali, Gori region near Skhinvali, which Russian forces have occupied since 2008. Reportedly, Russian soldiers killed Tamas Ginturi and abducted Levan Dotiashvili. The victims were at a closed St. George of Lomisi church trying to open the doors of the church to pray. According to reports, Russian forces opened fire on Ginturi's car near the church. The locals say the Russian forces might have abducted two more local civilians. President Salome Zurabashvili urged the international community to condemn Russia's actions. The government of Georgia requested a meeting involving Russian forces and the EU monitoring mission. Social Justice Center, or SJC, a local human rights watchdog, warns that illegal arrests and abductions cause constant fear and danger among the population living near the border between the occupied territory and Georgia. The SJC holds the Russian Federation responsible under international human rights law for prolonged occupation violations. They also criticized the Georgian government for inadequate security efforts in these villages. On Monday, the 8th European Commission said that the EU Council should grant Georgia candidate status. The commission supported Georgia's citizens' desire to join the EU, but it said that the government needs to engage more with the opposition in civil society and fulfill the 12 EU priorities. President Salome Zurabashvili hosted a gathering of Georgian citizens and diplomatic corps to celebrate the occasion. Zurabashvili launched a signature campaign titled Our Voice to Europe, calling on European leaders to grant Georgia EU membership candidate status in December. Moreover, she said that she would attend the peace forum in Paris with Prime Minister Irakli Kharbashvili as a sign of depolarization, one of the 12 priorities the Georgian government has received from the EU. On Thursday, the second Transparency International Georgia, or TI, in any corruption watchdog organization, updated its list of high-level corruption cases involving government officials and their relatives. The list now includes 151 cases. The I points out that even though Georgia has low levels of petty corruption, high-level corruption goes unpunished, amounting to state capture. The I's Corruption Perception Index shows that Ivanishvili, the founder of the ruling party, has influenced key institutions. They stress that high-level corruption appears as kleptocracy, undermining critical voices. Investigations often stall, especially when linked to the ruling party. Funny thing. Experts recommend transferring corruption investigation power to an independent agency. Currently, this responsibility falls on the state security services and the prosecutor's office. I roll. On Monday the 6th, the local human rights NGO called Human Rights Center, or HRC, released a report on the police's actions during the protests that took place from the 7th to the 9th of March against the bills on transparency of foreign influence and on registration of foreign agents, the so-called Russian laws. The HRC said demonstrators were holding a peaceful rally when the police started blocking protesters and using pepper spray and water cannons without warning. They noted the police actions violated the principle that there needs to be an imminent threat to use water cannons, tear gas, and pepper spray. The HRC emphasized that even though some demonstrators misbehave, indiscriminate police force can escalate conflicts, which happened during these protests. The report argued that police actions lacked legal basis and raised concerns about the police's use of force. On Thursday the 2nd, Civil.GE, a UN Association of Georgia News Project, shared USAID's October report on Georgia's Civil Society Organizations, or CSO's, Sustainability Index 2022. CSO is a uniquely American government term for what everybody else calls NGOs or civic organizations. The report assesses the impact of the war between Russia and Ukraine on Georgia's policies, expressing concerns about the government's policy or restraint or appeasement towards Russia by allowing direct flights and not imposing national sanctions, despite strong support for Ukraine. Covers Georgia's EU membership application and the influx of Ukrainian refugees and Russian citizens affecting political polarization and economic activity. The report highlights democracy's deterioration, mainly due to the foreign agents or Russian law. The report says CSO's influence, policy discussions, and media coverage centers on political debates with government-friendly outlets engaging in smear campaigns against civil society groups. On Thursday the 2nd, famously brilliant Georgi Lomsadze published an article entitled Georgia, One War, Two Films, Many Opinions, in Eurasian at an independent organization covering news from and about Central Asia and the South Caucasus. Two films, Nana Janalidze's Lisa Go On and Anna 
Zipchipa's self-portrait along the borderline delve into the Abkhazian conflict's complex narratives. Liza Goan explores the Georgian-Abkhaz war, addressing the brutal actions of both sides and challenging the Georgian perspective. The film sparked controversy and offers a message of healing and mutual forgiveness. Self-Portrait Along the Borderline takes a personal approach to depicting the life of a Georgian Abkhaz girl caught between identities during the war, offering a unique and impressionistic perspective on the conflict's impact on individuals. Want to read the whole article? Link in the show notes. Piece published in the International Forbes, Lisa Zimmerman tells audience Georgia this Off the beaten path country offers remarkable food and wine. Despite Soviet history and political challenges, Georgian chefs and winemakers have been promoting their traditional cuisine and exceptional wines. Georgian restaurants in New York City and the Bay Area like Oda House, Old Tbilisi Garden, and Bevdi, which is near Stanford, introduced Americans to its delicious flavors of the Caucasus region, featuring dishes like Khingali and Khajapuri. Culinary Backstreet, a global guide to local cuisine, offers guided food tours and provides insights into local cultures and politics. Tours include stops at places like Sky Bar, Duma, Rigi, showcasing the diversity of Tbilisi's culinary scenes. Check out the piece in the show notes. On Sunday the 5th, Interpress News, a local news agency, reported that the annual festival to celebrate the Georgia drink Chacha took place in Tel Aviv in Kacheti region. Chacha 2023 showed participation from all eight Kacheti rayons, including farmers and small wineries. Kacheti Governor Georgi Aladashvili and regional officials attended the inauguration, musical processions, local entrepreneurs printed their products with Chacha. Uh, the festival awarded gold, silver, and bronze medals to individuals and companies for the best Chacha. New theater performed theatrical acts, Georgia Chamber of Culture, the Tourism Development Association, the Administration, State trustees in Kacheti region organized the festival. Locals from Balda Canyon in Martvili municipality have been fighting to preserve the canyon for several months. Recently, the authorities handed over the canyon to a private company, Canyon 350, for 40 years. Even though the government has given some investors permission to build tourist infrastructure in Balda Canyon, on Friday the 3rd, protesters prevented one investor from entering the canyon. Locals opposed the deal, saying the company will ruin Balda Canyon as a natural site. The group also accused the investor and his employees of assaulting them the previous day. Protesters said they blocked the highway only for the investor and his employees, and law enforcement officers are asking them to leave the roadway. On Tuesday the 7th, Galton Tiger predicted 2023 tourism revenues for Georgia at 4.2 billion U.S. dollars, third quarter of the year showing a 5% year-over-year increase to 1.5 billion U.S. dollars. Tourists from Russia took the largest share, that's tourists with air quotes from Russia, at 285 million U.S. dollars, followed by Turkey, 220 million, and European Union at 12 million U.S. dollars. And that's it for this week. You want us to avoid having ads on these updates? Experts say that if you recommend us to everyone you know, then we won't have to include ads in the shows. So spread the word about the updates. Don't blame us. It's just the science. Subscribe to any of the platforms you're listening to, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, Amazon. It would really help us out. Now, fundies.